So we have our tree. All that's left to do is to actually use the tree itself for our sorting purposes. You're watching episode 3 of Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus, Tree Sort. Hello and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. Now that we have constructed a binary search tree, we can now actually make use of its property to actually get data sorted. So what's this special property? Well, of course, it is the condition in which a binary search tree works on. That is, for any element I pick out, everything on its left must be smaller, everything on its right must be larger. Notice how essentially this imposes a certain ordering on the nodes within the tree itself, which means if we read off the tree in a certain way, we will get a sorted list. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at a method called in order traversal, which will actually traverse the tree and actually read out all the nodes in a sorted order. When we're actually writing in order traversal, we're going to have to use recursion to do this. Now, in the previous series sorting algorithms Redux, I've actually covered recursion already before going into quick sorts. So if you want a full explanation of what recursion is, do click on the link on screen and, you know, go and watch that episode. I'm going to very quickly recap the concept here. A recursive function is a function that within its definition actually refers to itself. And by actually making use of recursion, the procedure for in order traversal becomes really simple. So when we're actually coding, essentially in order traversal looks something like this. First, before we can begin any computation, we want to check if the node we are inspecting even exists in the first place. Obviously, we won't have to do anything if it doesn't. Then, in order traversal calls itself for the left child node. Then, the code reports whatever node it's on, and then it tries to call itself again for the right node. Now, if you're confused at this point, it's understandable. The code isn't immediately easy to understand, which is why instead, we're going to actually talk about it in terms of just us tracing the tree with, you know, just manually. Essentially, we can pull out the concept of what we want to do just by looking at the recursive algorithm. When you first call the in-order traversal algorithm, it will just try to go to the left, and as long as the left node exists, it will keep going without reporting anything. Essentially, that's exactly what we're going to do. When we're doing in-order traversal, the first thing we want to do is to start at the root and then go left as much as we can. And the moment we stop, that is, of course, when a node no longer has a left child node. At that point, we report the value of the node. Now, just a fun fact, seeing as that this node doesn't have any more left children, what this means is essentially, you've encountered the smallest node in the tree. That is right. When you start from the root and go all the way to the left, the node that you stop at is the smallest node within the entire tree. So anyway, now that we've hit that position, there aren't any more left children. That is why, of course, when we're actually running the recursive algorithm, at this point, this line no longer runs. We just move on to the next line, which is report value at that position. Now, there are two things you can do at this point. If that node has a right child, you visit the right child in accordance to the actual algorithm. If there isn't a right child, you're going to have to backtrack. Now, notice how nowhere in the algorithm says move back. However, remember that this being a recursive algorithm essentially means that as you spawn more copies of itself, the rest of the copies are still waiting to, you know, fully execute. When the latest call of in-order traversal actually finishes, we go back to the previous caller. You can think of this simply as the first in-order command finishing, and now that it's done, all we have to do is to move on to the next line, which is of course to report the value at the node it's on. So what this means is, the effect is you go all the way down to the left, and once you can't go down anymore, you start reporting. You can go to the right node if there's any, if there isn't, you start backtracking. Essentially, that is the same set of steps you want to do for every single node within the tree. So here is a highly sped up traversal of this entire tree. I'm not actually going to walk you through the process, seeing as that this is a pretty large tree and it will take a while. Also, I kind of didn't put numbers into this, so it wouldn't be very useful anyway. Instead, let us now look at a simpler tree with numbers in, so you can see how we actually extract a sorted list out of this entire tree. 
So what we have here is your run-of-the-mill binary search tree. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to begin the in-order traversal process by starting from the root. We'll now go left as much as we can go, pass 5, down to 2. Now, since I cannot go left anymore, in fact, 2 is going to be the first element in my sorted list. So I'm going to just draw a circle to mark that I've chosen this value. So 2 is our first value. Now, since this guy also doesn't have a right sub list, essentially we are ready to backtrack. So if you cast your mind back to the actual algorithm, this will be a point where we are done with visiting the left side. Which means, of course, we report the value of 5. So 5 is the next number in our list. After that, the next thing we have to do is to visit the right child. Since we cannot go left of 6, what we are left to do is to actually pick it out and put it into our sorted list. Now we start backtracking. Since essentially there is nothing else left to do, we're going to backtrack all the way to the root and pick out the value of the root as well. We're almost done here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to visit the right subtree of the root. So we proceed in this direction, down to 8. Now we're going to have to pick out 8 at this point. And the reason for that is there are no left sublists. However, there is a right child, which is why we are proceeding in this direction to pick out our last item in this tree, that is the value 9. Now we're actually not done yet. Remember that we cannot just leave the algorithm hanging like this even though we've visited everything. We're going to have to backtrack towards 8. Once again, we're going to have to backtrack towards the root. And well, there's nothing left to do. Basically, this is how you do in order traversal. This is one entire pass from start to finish. Notice of course that the list we've generated is a sorted list. And there you have it. As you can see, in order traversal will give you a sorted list from a binary search tree. Is tree sort a fast or a slow algorithm? Now, let us take a closer look at what we're doing when we do tree sort to actually find out about this. So now let's say I want to actually use tree sort to sort this particular list. Now, here's what I have to do. I start off with nothing, and then I construct a tree using the contents of this list. After I'm done constructing this tree, I'm going to perform in-order traversal, which will of course read out everything in a sorted manner. So essentially, there are two separate steps, and each one of these steps actually take a certain amount of time. And what this means is at the end of the day, when we want to tell the actual running time of tree sort, we're going to have to take both of these into account. So the question is, how long does it take for us to insert everything into a tree? Well, that is actually the more difficult question, which I will leave hanging for now. Our second question being, how long does it take to perform in-order traversal? The answer to that is actually ON. Yes, it is a linear time algorithm, and here's why. Every time we perform in-order traversal, every node is visited a maximum of three times, never more than that. Of course, I will not offer you rigorous proof of this happening, just watch as I do this trace. Every time I'm looking at a node, I give it a tick, in a different color so you can tell easier. Notice that at no point of time do I tick a node more than 3 times. So essentially, in the worst case, the maximum number of comparisons we are making is 3n, which of course, under the big O notation, we drop the coefficient, and we get on as its time complexity. So that's very awesome, ON is actually faster than any sorting algorithm we've seen so far, but unfortunately, that is only half the story. How long does it take for us to insert nodes into a tree? And this is where I show you how we can actually break tree sort to make it slow. Now, let's try to actually construct a tree using this list of items. Yes, this is a sorted list, and as a result, when we finish constructing the tree, it looks something like this. Performing in-order traversal in this state will still take O n time. However, the bottleneck happens when you actually try to create the list. Take a look at why this is so. Now, let's go back one step and try to insert the last item, the number 6, into the tree. I'm going to look at the root. I'm going to decide, okay, it's going in this direction. I'm going to look at the next item. Okay, it's going to go in this direction. So on and so forth. Essentially, to insert this item, I have to compare it against every single item that was already there. Now, multiply that by the number of items you have in the list. 
Doesn't this remind you of something we've seen in Sorting Algorithms Redux? Basically, we're doing the same thing as we did in any of the ON square algorithms. We are looking at n items, n times, and as a result, the insertion in this particular case is actually an ON square operation. That, of course, is why the worst case time complexity of tree sorts is ON square. The actual number of comparisons is n square plus tree n, of course the tree n coming from the in order traversal. But when we write things in the big O notation, we only keep the item that grows the fastest. Hence, the final worst case time complexity for tree sort is O n square. Can this be made faster? Well, the answer is yes, even though we won't go in depth into explaining how or why. I'm just going to very quickly demonstrate to you how easy it is to insert an item in a tree that doesn't look like everything in one line. Take a look at this. We already have a pretty sizable tree. I'm going to insert a new number. This number is just following a branch. It's just looking at all the numbers along that particular branch, and then it's just going to sit at the end of it. There are so many items that we did not actually compare this value against, because we already have the information regarding where it's supposed to go, without needing to look at those guys. That is the difference between a balanced tree and an unbalanced tree. In a balanced tree, we are guaranteed that it looks something like this, and as a result, insertions are quick. So how do we balance a tree? Well, that's for next episode. That's all there is for today's episode. I've showed you tree sort, and I've showed you how it is possible to break it. In the next episode, we'll look at a tree that balances itself which means essentially, even if you give it a sorted list, you will not break the entire idea of tree sort. So stay tuned for the next episode for that. Well, that's all there is for this episode of Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612tv.